What is the role of your board of directors in crisis management? Welcome to episode 224 of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. I'm Brian Strasser, Principal and Chief Executive here at Brightpath. And the role of the board of directors in crisis management is multifaceted. <clears throat> it's a critical role because at the end of the day, the board of directors is responsible for the management of your organization. And by that, I mean they're picking your management. And it's their role then to govern the management of your organization. The board's involvement is crucial in an organization for setting the tone at the top because they, after all, they're picking your CEO. And But their role is also critical because they ensure that the organization is adequately prepared, effectively managed, and capable of responding effectively to a crisis. Here are seven key things that the board of directors does from a crisis management perspective. The first is governance and oversight. The board is responsible for ensuring that the organization has a robust crisis management, business continuity, and crisis communications capability and plans in place. That includes overseeing the development of those plans, governing those plans, and ensuring that they are regularly reviewed and updated. The second is around strategy and policy setting. Your board plays a key role in defining your organization's strategic approach to crisis management. They set the policies that guide how your organization prepares for, responds to, and recovers from a crisis. The third is resource allocation. Your board is responsible for approving budgets generally and the resources for crisis management initiatives. They ensure that the crisis management team and program have the necessary tools and support to effectively manage crises. Number four is risk assessment and management. Your board is involved in assessing potential risks and ensuring that there are strategies in place to then mitigate against those risks. That's often done in collaboration with the organization's enterprise risk or business continuity team or audit team, depending upon how your organization is set up. But you likely have a risk committee or an operations committee or an audit committee on your board that owns this responsibility directly. And in some cases, your chief audit officer or chief risk officer may even report directly to this committee rather than reporting through the CEO or other members of your management team. Number five is crisis response and leadership. During a crisis, your board may play a more active role, it depends on the crisis, providing support and guidance to the executive team. Their involvement is crucial to to ensuring that your response is aligned with the organization's values and long-term strategic objectives. Generally, the bigger stakes that are at play in a crisis, the more directly your board is going to be involved. Have a major cybersecurity incident that affects your organization's reputation and operations and data, and your board's probably gonna be directly involved in overseeing some aspects of that response and recovery in the long term, and may even be guiding management or approving decisions being made by your management. Number six is communication and stakeholder management. The board may also be involved in crisis communications, particularly in high stakes scenarios. They can play a key role in communicating with important stakeholders in your organization, like investors, regulators, and the public. Um, and that helps maintain the trust and confidence in how your organization is handling that crisis. And finally, number seven, learning and development. Post-crisis, the board should review the effectiveness of the response and identify lessons learned. That helps in refining your crisis management strategies and plans for the future. And again, the role of your board will depend a bit on the size of your organization, um, the stakes uh, that are at play in a particular crisis, um, and what your internal capabilities are. When you're um, when you come from a large Fortune 30 company like I did earlier in my career, the board was generally more informed about a crisis than consulted, but again, it depended on the situation. Um, and then we had annual updates to that board through the course of the year around some of our routine risk and continuity and crisis management planning, training, and exercises that went on. But again, the size of your organization, the complexity of your organization, your particular industry, regulatory requirements, and others all will come into play outlining um, what the role of your board is. It may not be exactly the way I described it here. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. We'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. 
Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.